Women's Department is 205-271-2966 or go to the website ewtn.com. Sir, where are you from? Well, we're really from Williston and Ocala, Williston where? Florida. Florida, okay. Williston and Ocala, we're kind of in the middle, so hmm. we go to church in Williston, and we also go to church in Ocala. Okay, well, well so we're all blessed by it. <laughs> right, but uh, my question is a little unusual, maybe. My question would be, uh, it's hard to, for me to understand a lot of times you say prayer, and you're wondering if uh, there's a hundred million people asking for different prayers, is God going to answer my prayer in a certain order, or he's going to pick it up later? Here's your pro I understand the problem, and here's the problem. You're not accepting an element of God's divinity, which is that he is without time. To say that God is eternal doesn't just mean that he never had a beginning and never has an end. It means he has no time. He doesn't have to go through things sequentially. Everything is present to him immediately. And uh, think of it this way. Um, uh, I give uh, an example. Um, you know, the, oh, uh, one of my favorite examples I got from C.S. Lewis. You know, I've written a number of books, and a couple of them have autobiographical elements to them. Now, if I am the character inside the book, it might take me 20 years to go through that story. But as the author who wrote that book, the whole thing is there to me at one moment. That is a rough approximation of how, for God, everything is present at once. He doesn't have to go through sequentially. You don't have to worry about that because he has no time. He has time, he has infinity for you, but no time for you. <laughs> so that's one of the ironies. I, think I just made that up. I think I might make a poster. <laughs> he, has, he has all infinity for you and all eternity for you, but no time for you. Because you don't have to worry about the sequence. Does that help? Yeah. It's, and it's good to let him deal with that. All right. Uh, we have another call. Hello, Vince. Yes, Father Mitch. Vincent, Thank where you so are you much. from? I'm from New York, Father Mitch. Oh, great, great. The city itself? Uh, no, I live out in Montauk, New York. Okay, good. And your question? Um, it's a work-related question. Uh, yeah. I, I work in a retail food market, and I wear a specific uniform every day. Okay. And I pinned a, a crucifix to my cap one day, and I, I was told by the store supervisor uh, that the crucifix was not part of my uniform, and I had to take it off. Mm -hmm. I was wondering, Father Mitch, could you please advise me about this? Yeah, you know, if um, I don't know the um, freedom uh, of religion, uh, religious expression laws in New York, I don't, I don't know. And what you may want to do is check, uh, you know, who would know is uh, Bill Donahue. Okay. who is over at the Catholic League. He, yeah. I mean, he lives in New York City, and he would know New York law better, uh, and okay. federal law. You know, he's not a lawyer, but he, he understands a lot of those things uh, because this comes up. But, you know, th there's, uh, and here's what I don't know, is that because it is a uniform that is for a certain corporation, and that uh, uh, you know, being in that uh, corporation, in that corporate uh, situation requires you to wear that uniform. They may have more rights than you for that specific, because see, if it was a government issue, they couldn't really say anything because they can't do that. But you don't have to work there. You can work someplace else. And yeah. so they have, they have certain rights about how you present yourself. Um, you know, the, so that's that's. But again, check with somebody like the Catholic League in New York City.